Hey, it's Nez. Um, I want to go over the gospel again. Um, I believe there's a lot of mixture out there. Um, there's a lot of things I'm hearing within the quote unquote Christian community and it's it's grievous. A lot of people are getting derailed from the simple truth, the simple gospel. They're easily forgetting what saved them. Um, or should I say what saves? When I believe the gospel of grace, the gospel of peace, the gospel of Jesus Christ, I was saved. And what is that gospel? Let me read it from 1 Corinthians chapter 15 from verse 1. And I'll read all the way down to verse 8. Okay? This is Paul writing, Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand, by which also ye are saved, if ye keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures and that he was buried and he rose again the third day according to the scriptures and that he was seen of Cephas then of the 12 after that he was seen of above 500 brethren at once of whom the greater part remain unto this present but some are fallen asleep which some have died in Christ after that, he was seen of James, then of all the apostles, and, and last of all, he was seen of me, also as of one born out of due time. Okay. All right. Um, I'm going to go up and highlight some things. It says, he, so Paul is presenting the gospel, kind of like reminding them the brethren, what the gospel is. And I feel at this time, a lot of people need to, you know, be reminded, okay? So, I said, this is the gospel which I preached to you. This is not new to you. You've heard it. You've believed it. This is what got you saved. Now, he's saying, if you if you keep in memory what I preached unto you. So, you should, this should jog your memory. This should be really at the forefront of your mind because this is what saved you, Jesus, right? And if this um, is, well, it shouldn't be news to you, but if this message has changed in your memory, that's why he said keep, you should keep the truth in memory. You should know what saved you. You should know beyond a shadow of a doubt. Um, you know, don't be confused about it. But if there's a change or you've forgotten, you know, which you shouldn't, you should know. But have you, he's like, unless you have believed in vain. What is that vain? Vain, it's vanity. It's, you know, self-conceit, um, conceit, conceitedness, you know, egotistical, you know, like looking to yourself. You know, is this of your own doing, um, pointing um, towards self, really? Um, it's like, have you believed in, you know, in vain, in vanity, in, in what doesn't save? If, have you believed in yourself? Have you believed in something else? Um, like, have you just tossed it out the window? What saved you? Have you... Put Jesus, who is your salvation, and pushed him aside and added works or added something else. Or, you know, have you changed the message? 
because when you change the message, it's vanity because it doesn't save, right? So he's like, you should keep the truth, the message of the gospel, the simple, unalter, unalter, unadulterated, sorry, <laughs> gospel. Keep that in mind, right? He says, he's reminding them, I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received. So what I'm telling you is what saved me is what I received when I believed, right? And what was that that I received? I received the message of Jesus Christ that he died for our sins according to the scriptures. The scriptures then was in the Old Testament writings. He saw the grace of God in the scriptures, the Torah, the, you know, the, the writings that they had, that they read in the synagogues. When you, <laughs> when your eyes are open, see, you got to know who Paul was. Paul was the Pharisee of Pharisees. He was learned in the law, you know, the Harvard student of, <laughs> of the law, right? Like he was the top dog, right? And he knew his stuff. But when he came and you had an encounter with Jesus on the road to Damascus and he was blinded and he sat down with the Lord, the Holy Spirit that indwelt him when he believed. <laughs> and after believing, he also went, um, I think it was for three years on his own um on like this hiatus, God took him on a journey, I, I, will, I will say in the wilderness, um, but it's not the wilderness, but he went to another country on his own, apart from the disciples and the apostles, to sit with the Lord. And he taught him everything that he amassed, he was he was taught, the scriptures he, he had known, you know, has learned over the time that he was in... Um, you know, as a Pharisee, God opened up the scriptures, just like Jesus opened up the scriptures for, um, for the disciples who walked with him on the road to Emmaus. He just opened up the Old Testament to them. And it spoke of Jesus, of one person. And that was Jesus. You will see Jesus in all of scripture. You will see him. He is grace, the grace of God, okay? And that's what Paul, that's what he opened up to Paul too. Jesus opened that, the scriptures to Paul. And that's why Paul could say, this is the gospel, right? How that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, because the scriptures prophesied about Jesus in Psalms, you see the passion of the of Christ where he died. You know, David spoke about it. That is in scriptures. That he was buried, that he rose again the third day, according to the scriptures. And of course, you have to, the scripture is not complete, you know, when you know, about resurrection, because this, this passage is talking about the resur resurrection of Christ. Paul was trying to, you know, tell people who were like, he says right here um, in verse 12, now if Christ be preached that he rose from the dead, which we've seen earlier, how say some among you that there is no resurrection of the dead? So all, th all three points are there in the gospel, the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ, because Jesus rose bodily, He's not, an, he's not a disembodied spirit right now. He is alive in his resurrected body. And that gives us hope for us believers that we will be resurrected. We will be changed in a twinkling of an eye and receive glorified resurrected bodies just as Jesus has now. Because as he is, we will be when we see him, when he comes. All right. So this is the gospel Nowhere in this does it say that you believe and you must prove that you 
are saved by the fruit you bear. No, no. Paul doesn't go into any of that in these passages. He just declared the gospel that saves. Simply. And that is what you see here in 1 Corinthians 15. Whenever you hear people say, oh yes, the gospel, but. They're adding something. They're not fully convinced. To believe in this passage, it means um, in the Greek, pistio. I know I'm not pronouncing it well, but it means to believe, to be persuaded, to have faith in. And that's what we have. That's what happens when we believe. We trust in the Lord. Trusting in the Lord is not, okay, I'm going to show I trust because I give up my old life, quote unquote, and I now um, grab a hold of the new life I have in Christ. So if I'm not ready for that, then I've not believed. If I've not shown that or done that, I've not believed. That is not what the scriptures are saying at all. Believing is just to have faith, to believe. Don't change the meaning of faith or the meaning of belief. You can't change it to fit your agenda. No. Believing is just that. Believing. You have it. You're fully persuaded in the message of Jesus Christ that he did what he did for you. Guys, what is going on? Have you believed in vain? If you, be if you change the message, you're believing in vain. We need to go back to the basics. And the basics isn't, oh, it's the fun. It's not like, oh, it's the basics. It's just, oh, it's the milk. It's, you know, I don't really need it. I need the meat. Don't rush to, to the meat of the word and be, you know, when you haven't, you don't have the fundamentals. Paul encountered that with the uh, with the church of uh of Corinth, yeah, this is this is Corinthians because they needed he needed to remind them over and over of the fundamentals. He's like, you guys should be chewing meat, but you guys are still in the milk. But Paul is not condemning them. No, he's like, you guys should have grown. But he knows that the, it's essential if they're if there's they're in their flesh, and being in their flesh is not just um, about sin. Like if they don't understand these fundamentals fully and they're, you know, they're assured of their faith and they're established, that's something you can't skip. And, and he's talking about saved believers. And I am too. I am too. And I'm cautioning those who, who add to the gospel. And, you know, when you ask them, what is the gospel? They might say this, this, and, and something else, or this, 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 and or but this, right? So you might question and say, okay, um, that is not the gospel. Maybe they have belief, but they've got confused on the way, but you condemn that accursed gospel. You know, I, I can't fellowship with you if you're teaching something contrary to the word of God, right? And you're preaching that and you're confusing babes in Christ. I will come against that. But Paul was emphasizing, you guys, you haven't left the elementary or the fundamentals, and he had to remind them again of that. The Corinthian church needed to be reminded of the gospel so that it doesn't, it's like, oh, have you believed in vain? What's going on? Let me remind you of what you believed. Don't add to it. Don't take away from it. Okay? Um... And that's just what I wanted to do today. That was just heavy on my heart uh, because right now we need to be established in the faith of Jesus Christ. We need that assurance of our faith. That's what's going to carry us through the trials because the devil is going to come to you with a lot of lies, deceit, witchcraft. And all in a bid to make you forget who you are, what you've received. I mean, who you've received. You know, who you have believed, what you believe. He is going to make you um, doubt the truth. And philosophize it. And, you know, put 
you're going to say so much flowery words and you're going to, it's going to sound like the truth, but it's a counterfeit and you have to be discerning of that. And discernment comes from the spirit of Christ in you. And, and how did he abide in you when you believe the gospel? So go back to the gospel, remind yourself so that when someone comes with a counterfeit, you will discern it. You exercise your senses your spiritual senses. You know, when you handle the word, you're exercising the truth of the gospel, the word of God, Jesus. When you hold him, you handle him. Um, You know, you handle the food he brings you. He is the food. He nourishes you with his word himself. And you touch that, you lay hold of him. And you know that this is my Lord, this is Jesus, this is who he is. You will discern the counterfeit Jesus, you know, because the people are gonna come to you with another Jesus, another spirit and another gospel. And you need to discern that because Satan beguiled Eve. Subtle, subtly, like the subtleness of the message of he brings is deception and it's imperceptible even. But those who have the spirit of God in them and they rest in Christ, they will see anything that will jolt them from that rest. When you're resting, you know, um, like when you're sleeping and people arouse, try to arouse you from sleep, um, sometimes it's hard to arouse some people who are deeply sleeping. They're arresting. They're just, you know, it's hard to, because they're heavy. Like when you try to carry someone who's sleeping, they're really heavy. They're, it's hard to pick them up. It's hard to, to move them because they're resting. They're solid, right? <laughs> I don't know if this is, is hitting home. Rest in the finished work of Christ. Therein, you won't be deceived, okay? You won't be easily deceived. The Satan wants to move you, to stir you up, to do something, to prove something that you are saved, to prove you're saved, to work for salvation, um, you know, to add works to the faith you have in Christ, that is of the enemy, of the evil one, okay? And I'm just beseeching you to discern that. Discern. (laughs) There is an evil spirit going around trying to put fear in the believers and babes in Christ will succumb to that. Not to say that they're not saved, but they're going to feel a whole lot of condemnation. They're going to feel, um, you know, you know, not, they're not going to have the surety that they should have in their faith that they are Christ's. (laughs) <laughs> that they are his and he is theirs. You know, I am my beloved and my beloved is mine. And he will never leave me or forsake me. He will lead me beside still waters. <laughs> Don't be like Peter who at that moment, he looked at the waves and he sunk. Be the Peter that looked at Christ and he walked on water. Focus on Jesus Christ. Okay? Focus on him. He is the one that saved you. You didn't deserve his salvation, but he said, believe on me and you will be saved. He is the one keeping you. All right? He saved you. He didn't say for you to prove that he saved. He just did. 
And he just said, believe that I did. Believe in me that I died for all your sins, past, present, future, that I was buried. You know, he was, he went down, he was in the heart of the earth. He died, right? And then he rose on the third day. He is now resurrected, glorified. <laughs> he has authority over heaven and earth. Everything is subject to under his feet. All authority has been given unto him to execute judgment, but he doesn't condemn the believer. He doesn't condemn anyone actually. But do you believe him? When you do, you are born again, born of God. And you're now part of his family. The spirit of God indwells you the nanosecond. I know some people don't like that term. The spirit of God, his spirit, the spirit of Christ indwells the believer. The nanosecond that belie- that person believes. Okay. Please do not forget the gospel. Keep it to memory. So that you don't believe in vain. Place no value on any message that adds to the gospel of Jesus Christ. Don't pay any attention to that. Pay no heed. Pay no mind. Discard it. Do away with it. Don't listen. Okay? I don't want you to have believed in vain. All right. All right, I'm going to stop there. I love you all so much. Okay? Take care. Bye-bye.